friends. My name is Holly and I'm the children's librarian here at Alamosa Public Library in Alamosa, Colorado. And this is Storytime Online. But first, I'm going to take off my I'm going to take off my safety mask. Since the library is closed and there is nobody here, I feel like it's safe to take my mask off so that we can share story time together. Let's see what we've got to share today. It's time to share a story, a story, a story. It's time to share a story, a story today with swings and children and crowns and laughing. It's time to share a story, a story today. So, but first, I wanted to share with you that it is the fifth week of our summer reading program. Is that right? Or is it the fourth week of our summer reading program? Mm -hmm. We've been very busy here at the library making project packs for you so that you can come to Alamosa Public Library and pick them up either on Mondays from 10 to 1 or by curbside pickup so that you can take them home and have something fun to do and imagine your story. This week, our project pack is all about kings and queens. And inside your project pack is a fun thing to do with your family. I'll show it to you in a bit. But first, I want to read this story with you called Rulers of the Playground, and it's by Joseph Kufler. He wrote the words and drew the pictures. And I picked this story because on the front cover, it looks like there's a king and a queen, or maybe a prince and a princess. But I don't see a castle. And I see swings and lots of other kids, and I really wonder what's going on. So let's read Rulers of the Playground and see what it has to do with kings and queens. Here's a map of the playground where these kids are playing. And it says Jonah's Park. And over here on the other side, it says where Lennox plays on the high swings in the big field. Hmm. Rulers, whoa, this is a big book. I better scoot back a little bit. I gotta scoot back, scoot back camera over a little bit. Rulers of the playground. One morning, Jonah decided to become ruler of the playground. I am now king of this land, announced Jonah. Promise to obey me and I'll let you play in my kingdom. Hmm. Hmm. Jonah's kingdom had slides, so everyone pinky promised. And just like that, Jonah became king of the playground. There's his crown, that's how I know it's Jonah. Everybody's having a good time. Seems pretty good so far. King Jonah was skilled. Look at me! In some ways. I order this tree to move. And generous. Who's hungry? Most of the time. You can share this cracker. Everyone played in King Jonah's kingdom. Everyone except for Lennox. Which child do you think is Lennox? I bet it's her. She looks pretty mad. Because she wanted to rule the playground too. This side of the playground is now mine, announced Lennox. 
Cross your heart and promise to follow my rules. <laughs> Lennox's kingdom had swings, so they crossed their hearts and promised. And just like that, Lennox became a mighty queen. <laughs> Queen Lennox was wise. Watch this! In most cases. Oof, I totally meant to do that. And patient. Take your time. Most days. Okay, enough already! <laughs> Everyone played in Queen Lennox's kingdom. Everyone except for King Jonah. This playground is mine, hollered King Jonah. Is not, shouted Queen Lennox. It's all mine. And just like that, the playground was divided in two. King Jonah and Queen Lennox each made a plan to grow their kingdoms. Here's King Jonah's plan. Plan for conquering. He's got all of the climbers and the swing set. It says swing set compromised. It's got all kinds of lists and ideas, a headquarters. Over here, it says mega queen ruler project by her majesty, Queen Lennox. You see Lennox's hands here, she's got her crayon. Self portrait of myself as mega queen. The world, my future kingdom. To do's. Number one, defeat Jonah. They conquered small things. Push, said King Jonah. Harder! Spin, said Queen Lennox. Faster, faster! And big things. Climb, shouted King Jonah. Higher, ho hollered Queen Lennox. What do you notice about the faces on the other kids? Does anybody look like they're having a very good time? Hmm. They even tried to conquer Augustine's dog, Sir Hamilton Humphrey Hildebrand III. Stay, hollered King Jonah. Fetch, shouted Queen Lennox. Uh -uh. King Jonah and Queen Lennox claimed the entire playground until there was nothing left to conquer and no friends to play with. Conquering is complicated, said King Jonah. Yeah, said Queen Lennox, super complicated. So they made a new plan. There's the red ruffly sleeve of Jonah. And there's the yellow sleeve of Lennox, both working on the same plan. It says, important apology project. Tasks, remove flags, make plan, become a regular person, create a democracy, be suspicious of future rulers. And look, they've drawn themselves. There's Lennox. How to perfectly apologize. Innocent eyebrows, eye contact, show your teeth. And look, there's the dog. They took down their royal flags. They gave back their kingdoms. Jonah stopped being king. Lennox stopped being queen. And what do you notice about their faces? 
see if their friends come back. <gasps> We're done conquering, said Jonah. We cross our hearts and promise to never be rulers again, said Lennox. And just like that, the playground was fun again. Everyone was happy, except for Augustine. Remember Augustine? Look at these happy guys. He's saying, wait a second. They're happy. They're happy. They're happy. Everyone was happy except for Augustine and Sir Hamilton Humphrey Hildebrand the third. Hmm. Dun dun dun. The end. What do you think will happen on the playground now? That Augustine is trying to be the ruler of the playground. Hmm. Maybe you can test it out. Maybe you could be the ruler of the park or the ruler of the living room. See how it goes. You can come to Alamos Public Library and pick up your project pack for this week if you live in our valley. See, it says kings and queens on it. And inside, you'll find some cool stuff that you can use to make your own crown and be the ruler of something, even if it's just the ruler of your own bed when you go to sleep tonight. Let's see, there's also in our bag. Check it out. Some jewels. Maybe you could put them on your crown if you want to. There's some more jewels in there. Oh, there's also a cool design that you can make your own family crest. You could draw it. You could cut out pictures and put them on there. Also, in your weekly project pack, you'll find the first clue from our friend Larry the Library Gnome who has been running around the town of Alamosa and hiding in shop windows. Usually Larry delivers another clue for me when we do story time. Sometimes he texts me a message. One time he put his uh, second clue into my mailbox, but I, I haven't gotten anything today. I don't know what's going on with that. Did you hear that? There must be a delivery. That was the doorbell. Let me just check. Hang on one second. There must be a delivery here today. You guys, there was a special delivery. Check it out. Somebody left this right on our doorstep here at the library. Look, it's got a bow on it. It must be a, a present. little puppies and a note. Should we read it? I'll read it to you. It says, <gasps> who do you think it's from? First of all, there's toys to play with. There's models to build. There's projects for the crafty and puzzles for the skilled. This must be the second clue about where Larry is this week. Hmm, a place with toys and models, projects for crafting and puzzles. Hmm, where in Alamosa could you find a place with models and craft projects and puzzles? Hmm, must be a pretty special place. I guess that's where Larry is. Ah, wait a second. Larry has magic gnome powers. And if he brought us these puppies, I wonder if they've got a little bit of magic left on them. Look how cute they are. They've got little ears and little paws. Let's look closely at this. I'm gonna put their little house right here. Look, do you think he's got any magic left on him? Some gnome magic? Let's try something. Maybe we could close our eyes and think really hard about Larry the Library Gnome's gnome magic. And let's see if we can turn this toy puppy into a real puppy. 
Ready? Close your eyes. And let's count to seven. And I'll abracadabra and see if we can get Larry's magic to work on this puppy. Ready? Close your eyes. Are they closed? Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Open your eyes. Oh! We did it. There must have been a little bit of library gnome magic left on those toy puppies. We turned that toy puppy into a real puppy. Oh, he licked me right on the mouth. He's very cute. Maybe I should give him to Larry. Do you think he belongs to Larry? Hey puppy, do you like stories? I just thought of another story that I know about a king and a dog. Should I read it to you? Okay, you sit right here on the carpet and I'll read it to you. Wow, that's some really powerful gnome magic. Look, it's right here. I happen to have a story that's called The King's Taster. And it's about a king and this dog. Hmm. I'll read it. It goes like this. Let's see. Kenneth Opal wrote the words, and Steve Johnson and Lou Fancher worked together to paint these illustrations. Have you ever seen a dog with glasses? That little mad. Oh, you guys, look what happened. I put the puppy down to read the story. It was short-lived library gnome magic. Oh, well, I guess we should just read this book then. To the toy puppy. The King's Taster. The King's Taster by Kenneth Opal. And paintings by Steve Johnson and Lou Fancher. There he is, the little taster. My name's Max, and I eat like a king. I'm the king's taster. I taste all his food before he eats it to make sure it's not poisoned. I also get his leftovers, plus whatever anyone drops under the table. I'm the king's taster, but I'm the cook's dog. We've been together since I was a pup. He's the best cook in the kingdom. He lets me lick the bowls and eat the scraps. Then one day, we got a brand new king. The cook went straight to work on the coronation feast. He chopped, he topped, and he tailed. He sliced, and he stirred, and he whisked. He cooked wild boar, peacock, and venison. He baked cheese pies, rose puddings, and syllabub. It was a feast fit for a king. I tasted the king's food. It was delicious. but the king only picked at his food until it was all mashed up. I will not eat this food, he said, and he pushed it to the floor. No one said a word. I ate the king's meal. Do you see the king there? Do you see his crown? I bet you could use your project pack to make a crown like that. But I bet you wouldn't do this at the dinner table. Oh boy. In the kitchen, the cook clutched at his hair. Why doesn't the new king like my food? He cried. I burped. I'd just eaten like a king. Max, the cook said, this is a serious matter. Tomorrow night, I've got to serve the king food he'll eat. But what? I barked. That's it, the cook said. I must get some new recipes. Not a second to lose. We harnessed the horses and left for France at once. And there, in the finest kitchens of Paris, we discovered a wondrous new concoction made from potatoes. The king will love this, said the cook. We made it home just before noon. That night at dinner, the cook set the platter before the king and whisked off the top. Your Highness, he said, may I offer you French fries. I tasted the king's food. It was delicious. But the king picked and poked at his food until it was mushy and all mashed up. 
I will not eat this food, the king said, and he lifted his plate and heaved it across the dining room. No one said a word. I ate the king's meal. Back in the kitchen, the cook was banging his head against the wall. This is terrible, he cried. I burped. After all, I'd just eaten like a king. Come on, Max, we've got another journey ahead of us. We set sail for Italy at once. We glided by gondola through the canals of Venice, and in the Piazza San Marco, we learned of fabulous breads and herbs, sausages, and cheeses. Our king won't be able to resist this, said the cook. We made it back home with only hours to spare. Your Highness, the cook said proudly, from Italy I bring you pizza. I tasted the king's food. It was delicious. But the king picked and poked and puffed at his food until it was mushy and mucky and altogether mashed up. I will not eat this food, the king said, and he put it in his catapult and fired it across the dining room wall. No one said a word. I ate the king's meal. This is no way to live, Max, the cook said, tugging at his hair. We'd better get it right this time. We cast off our balloon at once and sailed through the skies across the great Atlantic. In Mexico, we journeyed by mule through thick green jungles. And near golden pyramids, we learned of kidney beans and chili peppers, cornmeal and spices. This, the cook said, will win the king over. We thanked our guides, soared up into the sky and made it home with only minutes to spare. Chili tacos, your highness, proclaimed the cook. I tasted the king's food. It was stupendous. But the king picked and poked and puffed and plucked at his food until it was mushy and muddy and mucky and altogether mashed up. Then he threw it out the window. It landed with a plop in the moat. Off with his head, the king shouted at the cook and stomped away. No one said a word. My meal was eaten by crocodiles. In the kitchen, the cook sat hunched over in his chair. That's it, he said sadly. I'm finished, Max. The king's going to chop off my head. He put away all his pots and pans, his whisks and knives and stirring spoons. He took off his apron and hung it on a peg. I wish I'd started my own place, said the cook. I always wanted to, but maybe I'm just no good anymore. You're the best cook in the world, I barked, but I don't think he understood, so I licked his hand instead. I couldn't sleep. How could anyone not like the cook's food? It didn't make sense. I heard a cupboard door squeak. I saw a shadow scuttling out of the kitchen. I followed. Outside the kitchen there were crumbs on the floor. They tasted like almonds and sugar. I followed the crumbs down the hall and straight to the door of the king's bedroom. I peeked through the keyhole. I ran back to the cook's room and danced a jig on his belly to wake him up. Then I stood in the doorway and barked. All right, all right, I'm coming, he said. I'm coming. Outside the king's room, the cook peeked through the keyhole. You're a good dog, Max, he whispered. Then he opened the door without knocking. Hello, your highness, he said. The king was sitting in the middle of his enormous bed, eating candy. The sheets were covered with licorice all sorts and ginger cookies and huge hunks of marzipan, and he was gobbling there like there was no tomorrow. He was gobbling like there was no tomorrow. How dare you enter my bedroom, cried the king. Sire, said the cook, I understand now why you don't eat my food. You've been filching candy from my kitchen, and you have spoiled your appetite. This must stop. You can't tell me what to do, he shouted. I'm the king. 
I will tell your mother, said the cook. That stopped the king cold. You wouldn't, he said. I would, said the king, and I will. The next night at dinner, the king tried his food. The night after, he tried a little more. And the night after that, he ate everything on his plate. Cook, he cried, your food is fit for a king. And you, your highness, the cook replied, are at least eating like a king. Ask me for anything, the king said, and it shall be yours. I'm not the king's taster anymore, but I'm still the cook's dog. And he's the best cook in the world. We've got our own place now where everyone eats like a king. Do you see the sign on the door? It's the cook's new restaurant and it's called the King's Taster. Mm. The end. What a special story time today. We had a magic delivery. We got our clue from our friend, Larry the Library Gnome, and we got to read two stories. Boy, it must be time to sing goodbye now. It goes like this. See you later, alligator, in a wild crocodile. Give a hug, ladybug, blow a kiss, jellyfish. See you soon, sweet baboon, out the door, dinosaur. Take care, polar bear, wave goodbye, butterfly. Goodbye. Bye.